In the Community is brought to you by Star Bros Brewing and now joining us with Larry Espinosa is uh, Gabe Nocer and owner of International Soccer Arena. I, I've played at your place and your new place and, and everybody has, right? And it's something that we needed here in Albuquerque, right? It's something that the, the indoor soccer community needed. And then I've also played a blaze and dabbled there, but your place is the place. So talk mm. about International and how this all started. Well, we started in 2001, and you remember you were probably there and as a high schooler yeah. um, off Copper and San Mateo. And uh, it started, I was jobless. I was actually doing a little bit of substitute teaching, and I had had a little bit of management experience before that, and I was kind of in between jobs, and I talked to my dad, and I said, hey, it, you know, I, I know I want to run a business. I just don't know what. And I was, had been coaching soccer basically since I graduated high school. And he said, why don't you combine what you love, your hobby, with a business, and you'll love what you do forever. And that was the best advice anybody could have given me. So I knew the building on Copper and San Mateo, which um, I played in when I was in high school. Larry probably played um, around yeah, there as well. it's that old, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I knew it was sitting empty. Because was, was he able to move around? Was yeah, yeah. You know, Larry was always a good leader, you know, very vocal. <laughs> he, he, he yelled more than he ran, but, you know. That's uh, important. He's, he's a good sometimes. leader. Yeah. So, um, you know, I said, you know what, my friends and I were kind of half joking about opening um, the San Mateo location up and... Um, I said, why not do it? So my dad gave me a little father-son loan. Um, my friends and I, Casey Grange, who's Pat's older brother, yes. um, and uh, Jeremiah, who's still with me, Jeremiah Pena, who's now my general manager. We spent all summer fixing it up. It was like in awful condition. Um, the month that we opened, the place on Morris and Candelaria, um, which had forced the San Mateo location to shut down, that place, just by some grace of God, closed in the same month that we opened which made so, you busy, busy. Exactly. Now, I know so. Blades also was open, I mentioned it, but really yeah. kind of cross town. Like for real rancho guys yeah. like me, then it was, it was more convenient, but not really overall. Like exactly. That couldn't have affected you much. Not really. Well, so we were open for two years before Blades even opened up. They did take a little bit of our business. It was the nice newer location, um, but we were still able to sustain because basically our location, because there's a lot more um, soccer players in Albuquerque itself. So we just slowly, you know, we're building our leagues um, year after year. In 2008, we started a program called Little Kickers, which is a child development program for children 18 months to nine years old. And Which my son did, by the way. It was really awesome. Nice. It was awesome, awesome. Well, good. Yeah, it's an incredible program. Uh, it's not focused solely on making these soccer machines. It's focused on child development. Yeah. So. Our main goal is to make children, or hope to make children, love the game of soccer. And um, what, it's, what we've also seen is that it's made parents who either played when they were younger or never played at all, all of a sudden want to come back in the game. So we've seen them in our adult, adult leagues as well. Um, so we did that in 2008. Um, kind of in the meanwhile, we were, had a lot of friction going on with our landlords, and um, we were going to come short of staying in there pretty soon, so we had to uh, construct a new location, um, which uh, we opened in, it'll be five years ago in January. Wow, and, it's uh, hard to believe that yeah, it's been that long. It's gone really fast, so ever since we moved there, it's off uh, the south front of Jordan Paseo, just east of Edith by the Rail Runner Depot. Um, it's become a more centralized location now. We're in, yes. the, you know, closer to Rio Rancho, closer to the west side, still closer to the northeast heights. So we're, that's so becoming more. So you take International than, Soccer Arena to this new location <coughs> and mm and you get a new facility really mm -hmm. out of it and, and a new pitch which was awesome too and that brought a lot more excitement as well didn't it exactly yeah it's uh just been fantastic it's it's a crazy ride especially for those that were with us in the san mateo location it's uh from that going from that building to this was just heaven sent so yeah. uh it, it's been a great ride and we really appreciate everything everyone in the community has done little things little things let me ask you this um you know, with now the the technology of turf and and out there, and and uh, you could wear uh, like actual cleats on turf, but you mm -hmm. decided not to go that route mm -hmm. with the new pitch. But talk about that. I mean, you, you still got to you still got to use flats and everything. Exactly. So the reasoning why is um, mostly for a soccer development standpoint. We feel people are you know if people are if children are trained on the faster surfaces, they have to develop pure touch. And I for me, I'm a technique guy. I'm not a athlete guy, um, although athleticism is, of course, important. 
But if you have good technique, you can play no matter how athletic you are, you know. Um, of course, Larry had good <laughs> technique, you know. So, you, um, you know, we chose to do that uh, as opposed to that synthetic grass. Uh, we didn't want to mess with cleats. We also didn't want to mess with the little rubber tires that yeah. are ground up in there. Um, both from the worst thing is going home right and taking your cleat and dumping out the, exactly. the rubber tires all over the place. Yeah, and that kind of stuff gets all over the arena. Um, and for me, I'm a kind of a health freak. I know <laughs> that you know playing on ground up tires and getting it in your nose and ears, that kind of stuff's not good for your body. So we wanted to stay away from as many uh, toxic elements as possible. I want to know about your leagues and tell everybody about your leagues because you, you've got leagues from co-ed to all the way to very competitive leagues. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Yeah, our co-ed leagues really, I mean, we have a, a, at the bottom of recreational, which has kind of evolved to do you know, D from the bottom, which is very, very beginner, C, B, and A. So that's just our co-ed rec. We have four divisions. Then we have co-ed intermediate, which we have an A and a B in that as well. Um, and then our men's leagues are divided from men's advanced, which is the top, going down to men's intermediate, has three levels, A, B, and C from there. And then women's has now also has A, B, and C as well. So it's kind of, you know, evolved over time. Before we just had basically men, women, and co-ed, and now we have the different divisions. And it makes for a lot more of a fun competition because now the D teams are really enjoying playing each other versus, you know, you get a team that wants to sandbag in a certain league and, and we're really cautious about allowing that kind of stuff. So people who want to get involved or want to find a team or want to put a team in, what are the seasons like? Where do they go from? How do they have to go about it to get a team in? We have six seasons a year. Um, the information's on our website, internationalindoor.com. Uh, we have winter one, winter two. That's kind of when we start our, our, our year is in November. Uh, so winter one, winter two in January, and then we go spring one, spring two, and summer, so, um, and fall, sorry, that's the last um, season of the year. Um, so basically we have a start date, which, you know, since we have six seasons, um, I don't have all the six dates memorized. So we have a start date of when we accept registration and we do it online, um, and it goes like that. Within, literally within a matter of five minutes, some of our leagues are filled up. I mean, you're, you're general manager of the Soul. Can't you get us to get a team in there? You know, I play. Why don't you I invite still play. me into I don't know why you guys don't invite me into this. Uh, you know what? Ron said you don't have skill. That's oh, what man. Ron said. That's just, that's, I mean, Ron doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, hey, you know what? I'll, I'll invite you out. <laughs> Can you ever probably even get Gabe to let, you know, let you play on our team? No, I, I, I've, I've played at the new location, right? And, and, and like Gabe had mentioned, I used to play a lot at, at the older location. Um, but... Uh, you know, newer is better, right? So the newer location is awesome. He, imagine going from a Toyota Corolla to a Porsche. <laughs> That's really what, That's it boil, what it boils down to. Um, you know, central uh, copper, whatever it's called, it served its purpose. It, sure. it, it Gabe, Gabe took everything that he learned there and refined it and refined it. And now you go, like, I'm impressed every time I go to International Indoor just because of the way that he has things running, what he has available to the public. You can do a birthday party there. Um, you can go into PKs now, have, you know, a beer and a, and a pie, uh, not dessert pie, but a pizza pie, and, and hang out. It's, he's, he's got it going down. So future, what's, what, is there anything else that you've got planned? Is uh, I have some ideas in my head, but I'll keep that to You're myself. Keep, come on, yeah. that's no fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you know, know, TV show, yeah. that's not going to be fun. Gabe's yeah. always been close to the chest. Yeah. <laughs> I like to surprise people. I'll tell you, so. I'm, I'm envious because we're soccer fans, right? And, that, and mm -hmm. that's your gig, right? That's your job. That's, I mean, that's your baby, though. You built this, and, and you get to do it every day. I mean, what's that like, being able to wake up and say, oh, i got to go to... Uh, you know, to international yeah. soccer arena today. That's no, it's awesome. Be tough, right? it, it's a, you know, it's still a job, so there are stressful moments, sure. and um, it's kind of gone from me being the janitor and the ref, and also the you know league coordinator to now that I'm the owner, and I I basically am trying to lead people to become managers and to then deal with with uh, their other staff members. So we have a fantastic staff, so it's nice that I don't have to do too much of the day-to-day -day operations, I can focus more on the bigger picture. You know, it's funny, I, I went to go see a, a buddy of mine, his son played uh, an indoor match on Sunday up in Colorado. I was up there for the, the Rapid Sounders game, and we walked into this indoor facility that was absolutely ginormous, doubled as a 
uh, indoor batting range as well. Um, and I looked at it, uh, was for, for being Denver and everything that they have, wasn't impressed. S said Gabe's got this hands down beat far as facility and what's available to them. They just, they herded these kids in like cattle. And I was like, well, where's the fun in that? Why, why aren't you st sitting and watching the next, the next group play, maybe learning a little bit? And that's the, that's the thing that's nice about international indoor. You, just, you, you get done playing, you want to hang out. You want to watch the next group, see your friends. And, and uh, it's just, I can't say enough about it. Boxing Day, the event is going to be at your place. Talk about that, guys. Um, you know, we, we've, we're trying to encompass everybody, again, to, to grow the game. Um, grow the interest in it so we decided to do, do FIFA 17 and uh, we're holding a Boxing Day bash where you can register and have a, a FIFA tournament you can also play some open league uh, soccer on that day and uh, the the facility having that ability to do that at a facility like Gabe's just fantastic um, lastly, I want to get in real quick, um, and Larry, you could touch on this, talk about tryouts coming up for the Albuquerque Soul. Tryouts, January 7th, um, both for Boxing Day and tryouts. You can go to our website at ABQ Soul FC. Um, we, we've kept it down. Uh, I believe it's $35 for registration. Um, it'd be a lot of fun again. Um, we're, we are consistently surprised who shows up and who's able to make the team, so, um, um, we're excited for it. Appreciate it, Gabe Nocera, uh, for you stepping on. If you haven't seen this place, you got to check it out. International Soccer Arena here in Albuquerque. It's awesome. Uh, it's for fun soccer from, from non-competitive all the way to as competitive as you would like. For Ron Patel and Larry Espinosa, I'm Adam Deal saying so long. You've been watching Soccer Talk with the Soul.